Welcome, friends. James Corbett here at CorbettReport.com, coming to you, as always, from the sunny climes of Japan. But today, I am not talking to a Skype interview guest. I am talking to a real, live human being in the flesh, which makes for a nice change. Today, we're talking to Yoshi Khan of Rhyme, Inc. Yoshi, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today. I'm very honored to be here, James. Excellent. All right. So, first of all, I think we should tell people what is Rhyme, Inc.? Rhyme, Inc. is a trading house based in Suzuka, Japan and we mainly import uh, products from the United States. All right, now I understand you've been around for a while, but in the last few years, you got interested specifically in Bitcoin. Tell us how and why you came, became interested in Bitcoin. Well, um, I work with my brother, and uh, we both got interested in Bitcoin through studying monetary theory. And uh, we... S- the book that got us started was uh, a book titled The Creature from Jekyll Island, uh, written by J. Uh, G. Edward Griffin. And um, f- from, from there, we, we, uh, we went on to Peter Schiff and, and then on to Mike Maloney and, and others. And... Uh, Soon we realized that uh, Bitcoin is like digital gold. It's not. It's money that is not based on debt, and uh, it has a great future. We thought. All right. So you've been interested in Bitcoin for a few years now, but just right now, right at this moment in time, you're preparing to release something called the Satori Coin, which I guess can best be described as physical Bitcoin. Tell us about Satori Coin. Yes, uh, Bitcoin exists only in in the internet, but uh, we we wanted to spread the use of or understanding. Not so much the use, but understanding of Bitcoin among the Japanese people. And so we imported Japan's first Bitcoin ATM back in the spring of 2014. And we quickly quickly uh, realized that the ATM concept is way too advanced for most Japanese people. So we started thinking, what could we do uh, to spread the the use of Bitcoin among the Japanese people? How could we make it simple? And that's that's where we came up with the idea of physical Bitcoin. And there are other biz- physical bi- Bitcoin that went before us, like Cassius and Denarium. But uh, we thought those were too expensive. We wanted uh, to make the, mo- the world's most affordable. Uh, physical Bitcoin. All right, so it, we have some examples here so people can see what this physically looks like. But, okay, we're going to do a demonstration so you can actually see how to how to get the Bitcoin off of there. But tell people just in general how this works. What do people do with that physical Bitcoin? Well, there's a digital divide um, which divides people among people who has a uh, access to internet and people who don't and on the on the side of uh, the digital divide uh, with the people who has access to internet there's a crypto divide and what we wanted was people on the other side of the digital divide who has no access to internet to be able to hold bitcoin and start from there their study about Bitcoin. That's right. I mean, it can be a store of value in the way you would store gold because it physically exists and it can be accessed at any time once you have internet access. Yes, that's right. All right. And it's an exceptionally small amount of Bitcoin. How much and why did you choose such a small amount? Uh, On each Satori coin, uh, 0.001 Bitcoin is loaded. That's about, about... 50 US cents in current exchange rate and we deliver uh, we uh, made this we made the amount low to have a common sense on our side because um, 
50 cents is such a small amount, it's impossible to money launder 50 cents or tax evade 50 cents or buy 50 cents worth of illegal drugs or fund illegal or terrorist organizations with uh, 50 cents. Um, we, want, we wanted just enough amount so that just in case uh, Bitcoin goes to zero, nobody's going to lose sleep over it if it's only 50 cents worth. And if you lose a Satori coin, it's not going to be the end of the world. <laughs> if you gain the Satori coin, it's not going to be the beginning of the world. But it might be a beginning of a new world for yeah. people who don't have access to Bitcoin or have not stepped into the Bitcoin world yet. And it may be a way for people in there. But... As little as it is, as tiny and insignificant as the amount is, of course, the concept of transferring money this way is anathema to the powers that shouldn't be and the central banks with, it, with their debt-based fiat money. So, of course, the regulators in many countries are looking into how to step into this relationship. And interestingly, of all of the countries in the world, there is one in which it would be illegal to sell a Satori coin that is loaded, preloaded with Bitcoin. Tell us which country that is and why. Uh, that will be the land of the free, the United States of America. Um, the IRS says Bitcoin is commodity, but uh, when you transfer this commodity, the authorities regard it as transmission of money. And we are required to have a uh, money transmitter's license from one, uh, each, even, each and every state. And uh, that would be impossible. So... Um, um, other physical bitcoins like denarium uh, also sells um, they sell their coins in the United States but unloaded empty it would be up to the buyer to load bitcoin I, I, I turns out that's okay but uh, what's the point in selling uh, empty plastic coin. <laughs> right, yes. It defeats the purpose, at least of Satori coin and what yes. you're going for. So, now it's important to understand that this has not been released yet in any form. This is uh, a brand, we're getting a sneak preview here, but it is going to be released uh, to the world. It's going to be exposed to the world on March 10th. Tell us what you're going to do then. Uh, on March 10th at uh, Cloud Days Tokyo, we will be revealing um, Satori coin and, it, and uh, its distribution method. Our distribution method will be very analog and uniquely Japanese, and um, just like Satori coin. And I will report to James what that is as soon as uh, possible. I'm looking forward to hearing about it, and I'm looking forward to this, hopefully, eventually going international. Is that in the plans? Yes, that's our plan. All right, excellent. Okay, we're going to leave it there. Let's actually do a demonstration so that you can see just how simple it actually is to do this. And let's do a little movie magic editing to get us into position for the demonstration. Okay, after all that preparation, you're probably ready to see an actual physical Satori coin. This is what it looks like, and this is how it works. You can see the front, and then the obverse is a hologram, and if you peel back that hologram, you're going to find a QR code underneath. And you'll notice that it is physically somewhat hard to peel this back, and that's on purpose, so that when you are storing it, it doesn't peel off by itself. So you have to really work at it a little. And then when you peel it back, you're going to see the QR code. There it is. So what you do with the QR code, once you have it, you take your ah, blockchain app. And once you get your blockchain app working, then you just... Go to your addresses, you import a new address, you scan the code, it thinks about it, and after the wallet syncs, trust me on this, there it is, success. 0 0.001 Bitcoin, physical Bitcoin, you just import directly like that. And you can carry it around, you can trade with it. It is physical Bitcoin, an intriguing idea. Thank you very much for doing this. I really appreciate you showing me this. You're welcome, James.